welcome to a world where shootings, kidnappings and gang warfare are just part of the job. We're going on the journey to meet the real deal. Law enforcers who put their lives on the line every day, patrolling the most dangerous beats on the planet. So buckle up, cos we're about to roll with the world's toughest cops. South Africa is a country with a troubled and bloody history. For 43 years, it was a nation divided by the rules of apartheid, where the black population was stripped of their citizenship and denied their basic human rights. With it came oppression and violence. Followed by resistance, and finally freedom, when in 1991 the system was abolished. But the suffering has not ended for South Africa's new rainbow nation. Each day, more than 300 murders and violent attacks take place here. and it holds the dubious distinction of being the number one country in the world for assaults, rapes and murders with firearms. In the city of Durban, the officers of the South African Police Service are the thin blue line facing a crime epidemic. Put a gun down, put a gun down! Put that fucking gun down, police! If you make a mistake, it costs you a lot. His arm is dangerous. They can really damage the arm. Happens probably every day, eh? In Durban. Situated on the east coast of South Africa is the city of Durban. The busiest port in the continent. It has a population of nearly three and a half million people. Its sandy beaches and subtropical climate have made it a popular tourist destination. But like everywhere in South Africa, Durban has its problems with crime. From armed robbery and gun violence to ATM bombings and carjackings, it has it all. <laughs> Inspector Andre Stein is part of the Flying Squad, a mobile unit that deals with anything and everything that Durban's criminals have to offer. Cop for 18 years. There's not much he doesn't see patrolling the streets of his city. We get any incident, huh? policemen get shot, hijackings, armed robberies, house robberies, shooting incidents, you name it, day to day. This was my passion to become policeman, all of us. I grew up in a, in a military family, shot my first gun when I was five, six years old. That's how I grew up. Now it's in me. One of Durban's most common crimes is carjacking. In the KwaZulu Natal district, of which Durban is the capital, more than 70 cars are hijacked every week. It's only 7 a.m., but the carjackers have got up early. Uh, from five circulations, there's already four hijacked vehicles. Since, um, but, well, six o'clock, yeah. Most carjackers in Durban are armed with cheap, illegal weapons. They include handguns and even AK-47s. You never know, um, in the morning, like John and myself had children, 
When you close the door, you never know, hey, you're gonna see them again, that's a problem. It's all the situations, we attend. You think about your family. What car was that? Hmm? The blue Corolla. Andre has spotted a speeding vehicle. He thinks it has been hijacked. Carjacking in Durban is a growing problem. In the last six years, it has grown by 40%. Andre and his partner draw their weapons to question the driver and the passenger. Baba, pack me sisan and put my motor, Baba. Pack me, pack me sisan. Turn around. Open your eyes. Why are you driving so fast? Put your hands in there. Turn that way. Turn that way. You late, eh? It turns out that the car has not been stolen, and there is an innocent explanation for their speed. He had no, he had, um, he was late. That's why he was travelling so fast past this. Hmm? But here the cops can never be too careful. A lot of policemen get shot in South Africa where they just walk up to the car. You can't just walk up to the car and just say, hello sir, get out the vehicle. It's totally different here. They can fire at you, can shoot you stone dead next to you. Before you know, your partner's on the ground and you can't react like that. So you have to approach every car tactically. That's how you survive. You have to, you have to be ready all the time. Andre and his partner, John, recently chased and confronted a car containing four armed robbers. As we approach a car, me and the inspector, behind the car, the guy started firing through the car. And um, it's a wall behind us, it's a scrap nail, it's a bulletproof. It came past us like that. Uh, fortunately, I had to shoot back at him. He was deceased, and um, then the other three, oh three um, ran away. But the next day, they were found in the hospital with bullet wounds on them. Yeah. So you took one of the guys down. How did, how did that feel? I don't know. Um, how did that feel? I had to take him down because he shot at us. So. Feels the same way um, as uh, how they feel to take us down. Hmm? They're happy about it. He wants to shoot at the police. He can be our guest. If we shoot back and kill him, it's sad, but what can you do? The police in Durban face a ruthless criminal element, but when night falls, they know anything can happen. The flying squad is a rapid response unit, and so they are often the first on the scene of the crime. Well, it's a dangerous job. Any policeman's got a dangerous job, but with us, it's just different because um, we respond to the situation as it happened. Any, any emergency complaint that comes through, we respond to, so we're the first vehicle standing off. Why are you assaulting the police? We'll get fucked up, all right? Must have been drunk and driving, eh? Well, it was a hijacking and they took the car and then um, someone tried to chase it and crashed and they just started fighting to people on the road. You know, I think he shot, two people shot there. Eh? You have to be ready for everything. You, know, you can never know what can happen, eh? It can spark and eh? then you have to be ready for it. and lying on the road, we're unknown if it's, if it's murder or, or what happened there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Probably died of cold, eh? It's quite, it's fairly quite normal for everybody that around here to see, to see dead bodies on the street. Yeah, it's quite normal, yeah, yeah all the time, eh? It happens probably every day, eh? In Durban.
South Africa, there are 50 murders every day. And every three days, a cop is killed. Shootouts, muggings, rape and arson are the order of the day. South Africa has a population of around 47 million people. Six million fewer than the combined total of England and Wales. Yet in the same year that those two countries witnessed 757 murders, South Africa saw 18,487. Dina Govinda is part of Durban's organised crime unit. His everyday work includes gang crime, armed robbery, drugs and murder. Confronting Durban's criminal underbelly is an everyday task for one of South Africa's busiest cops. Any different type of crime is a challenge to me. Uh, serial killings, uh, murders, drive-by shootings. But crime also represents danger. Every year in South Africa, over 100 police officers are killed in the line of duty. In the UK, there have been less than 100 officers killed in the last 50 years. My mum, she's 61 years old, and she's extremely worried and stuff when I go to work. My wife, she's, very, she's also concerned, but she's a police officer, and she understands me. I used to work with her before, and, uh, you know, she worked with me. She understands the type of job that I do. Today, the job is about drug dealing. Durban is one of the cheapest places to buy drugs in South Africa, with most of the hard drugs coming into the city via the harbour. Around one and a half million containers pass through every year. And last year, almost 100 million pounds worth of drugs were seized. Dina's unit are after a suspected drug dealer. I've got a video footage of exactly what this guy looked at, but the problem is that every hour he's changing his clothing. At the moment, he's posing as a car guard. So I think in the next few minutes, he's going to change his identity. They believe he is supplying crack cocaine, ecstasy and marijuana. One of Dina's colleagues will pose as a buyer. Uh, you have 50 rand to buy either crack cocaine, uh, DACA, or ecstasy. Uh, I need every single pair of eyes that's available to actually do the, the major takedown of this thing. Glad with that, The suspect has been operating close to a petrol station. The cops move into position. Uh, we're just waiting now for Inspector Pillay to, to come through here to the garage. He's got the, the trap money already. He's going to go and do the trap. Inspector Pillay in the beige hat is trying to buy drugs from the suspect. What's happening now is they want him to go into another spot. He's suspicious of the police. He asks him whether he's a policeman or not. He's gone across the road to, towards under the tree. Did he come back? As soon as he passes, turn off him. I'll grab him. The other guy. What about the other guy? The exchange is taking place in the undercover cop's car. As soon as the dealer hands over the drugs, Dina and his partner will move in. Let him get in. Apprehend the dealer, but there is also his accomplice. He starts to run, but he soon gives up.
I sell me five parcels. Is this five parcels? Five parcels. This, this he, th One, he threw two, when you came. Two, three, open four, five. Did he serve you this five? Yeah, and he threw this two here. Yeah. Open one good firm. Anyway, man. Look, don't let him go. Thank you, my man. Sure. It's fine. Step up. Thank you. You need to check on that side. He's left more drugs on that side. The cops want to know where the rest of the stash is. And there's more here. It's been a good day for the organised crime unit. They've busted a drugs operation and the two suspects face a stiff prison sentence. Some of the toughest cops in Durban don't carry guns, get paid next to nothing, and have very basic interrogation techniques. <laughs> These four-legged cops are the latest recruits to Durban's dog unit. <laughs> Weighing in at around 60 pounds, these Belgian shepherds are lean, very mean, fighting machines. They can really damage the arm. <laughs> Especially if the, the criminal is resisting, like he's fighting back with the dog. <laughs> the dog can even break his arm, so I wouldn't be want to be in his shoes. Sayabonga Salai and his dog Paco are one month into a four-month training course. He's a very fast dog, and he bites very nicely. How is this? When he bites, he must bite and hold it and stay there until I tell him, giving him a, con a command, loss, and then he release. Loss! 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 Today's training is about pursuit of a suspect. The trainer, who is playing the role of a suspect, teases the dogs. Then he hides and they have to track him down. It's very important that during the training you you focus, concentrate in training a dog, because outside, you need a dog that's going to work, that's going to be able to chase a criminal, apprehend him, and also protect you as a human being, too. As well as learning to be Paco's handler, Sayabonga has to play the role of suspect in the training of one of the other types of dogs used in Durban, a Rottweiler. It's a very big dog, so it might take me down. That's a scary part of it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm wearing protective clothing. It, should, it won't bite through. But he's not taking any chances. The police come here, release me up. I fell down. That is very scary. Scary because the dog is too powerful. He knocks you off your feet. So it's, it's scary. It's scary. You don't know what the dog is going to do afterwards when he gets too uh, frustrated that he's not feeling the flesh. But the dogs are conditioned and trained to bite the arm. So, but you get nervous. It's human nature. Yeah. That dog is like a brother to me. He's like a partner that I never had. You must consider the, the dog safe as well, and you're safe, because it's not nice to lose a dog. You lose a, a partner. That dog is, is, is more than a human when it comes to partner. He will take a bullet from you. Dog. 
Gun violence is part of everyday life in South Africa. In the UK, there are nearly 60 murders involving a firearm each year. In South Africa, there are almost 60 every two days. Nobody really knows how many illegal guns there are in the country. Estimates range between half a million and four million. Recovering illegal weapons is a massive task for the South African police. And tonight, Inspector Andre Stein and his colleagues in the Durban Flying Squad are on the hunt for guns. They have intelligence that some security guards at a nightclub are carrying unlicensed firearms. They're going to raid the club and they're on their way to the briefing. Some securities there are using unlicensed firearms, R5s and the M5s and the other ones. Will they give over the firearms or what? Will they fight? Or what? They're not just going to just give in like that. You can expect some. They're going to give you a lot of fight for that. Maybe peaceful, not peaceful. Well, this is a pain in how quick we hit them and how surprised we are. As the flying squad heads towards the nightclub, the officers still don't know who is involved or what else they might uncover. Many of South Africa's illegal firearms are stolen and some come across the border from bordering African countries, including Mozambique and Zimbabwe. In a country where you can buy an AK-47 for as little as 60 pounds, the dangers of easily available weapons are clear. They're involved in taxi warfare, um, gas and trans, you never know right, what they use those firearms for. That's why we arrest them with those firearms, the firearms go for ballistics, and the ballistic can link them in other cases. Quite dangerous. Yeah, no, it should. It will be dangerous. Yeah. They've got high-powered weapons, and and uh, they, anything can happen there. They can maybe just hand him over, or they might try to fight, and then we'll see. Yeah. Unfortunately, with this job, uh, you can't start in making mistakes because you could die tomorrow. Not like a normal job. If you if you um, make a mistake, it can cost you a life. Put that thing off it. Go, 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 go. With lights off, they pull up out of sight of the nightclub entrance. Come, come, come. Okay, ready? Stay net behind each other. How's it, Chief? Hey, police, Pagamisi San, police. Put a gun down. Put a gun down. Put the fucking gun down, police. Put it down. Thank you. Set your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Come around. Put your hands up, because I'm telling you. Put your hands up. Put your hands up, please. Listen to me. Put your hands up now. For what? You check my gun so no, one Put your hands up. Put your hands up. No, Don't can't. get clever. Don't get clever. I know. Okay, thank you. Andre asked the security manager to see the permits for the guns. You've got a license for it? Permit. I want to see those permits now. Where's your permits for to carry out LM5? To carry yeah, LM5. Hey, don't tell me how to do my work. You don't tell me how to do my work, all right? No, no, don't tell, don't interfere don't with the police's job. Said. Don't interfere. I'll put you on arrest. You can do anything you want. All right. Don't, don't get clever. No. Okay, put us on handcuffs. I'm arresting you. Hello. Don't get clever, my friend. All right? Don't get clever. Now you keep quiet. Okay? All right? All right? I'm doing my flipping job, man. Okay, sir. I'll have a meeting, you're scared of the company. Don't no, touch his phone. No, 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 just... They check the serial numbers against those of stolen weapons. Okay. Or it could be six. This one's positive, eh? Huh? Check the nine mil. He's carrying a firearm, it's positive. It's a stolen firearm, well, LM5. Stolen? Yeah, so you're under arrest, what? okay? You're under arrest for now? Listen to me, okay, my friend? Just cooperate with me, okay? Cooperate with me like, nicely. Despite being in possession of a stolen firearm, the man is not ready to come quietly. 
for that duet. So you can't put me there. Yes, I can. You're under arrest for unless so far off. Yeah, you can tell yeah. me to. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen to me. For what? Listen to me. That farm is a stolen farm. All right. Andre and his team have arrested one man and they've recovered two machine guns and a handgun. Now we've recovered um, two LM5 automatic um, weapons with each with 30 round magazines in it. And the one far LM5 uh, is um, wanted for theft and the other two, um, they never had, they belong to a scary company but they never had the competency certificate with them and they Details on the certificates they gave, we took away from is all wrong. The firearm numbers are wrong and everything. The other one was a 9mm with 15 rounds, yeah. So all together we got three weapons, two automatic rifles and one um, pistol. Worth all together about 75 rounds. No charges were brought against the doorman, but the security firm are being investigated for supplying an illegal weapon. Right up there with Iraq. South Africa is one of the most dangerous countries on earth, and the cops patrolling the streets are the foot soldiers in the war against crime. As in many parts of the world, the use of CCTV in South Africa has helped the cops in their fight against crime. <laughs> Durban is home to nearly 200 cameras situated in and around the city. They discreetly monitor areas that are rife with crime. But in South Africa, armed criminals don't fear the threat of CCTV. In this incident, at an affluent shopping centre, three armed robbers enter a jewellery store. With the security guard taken care of, the next targets are the Rolex watches in the window. But as they leave the store, an off-duty cop sees what's going on and reacts. Up against three armed robbers with machine guns, the cop fights back. After emptying his magazine, there's nothing he can do but try and dodge the bullets. Amazingly, he survived, having been shot five times. And two weeks later, the robbers were arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment. Another day in Durban, and yet another carjacking. <laughs> Dina Govinda of the organised crime unit is chasing a couple of armed suspects who have held up and stolen a car. We want to hijack vehicle. It should be hijacked right now. Two African males have a complainant at gunpoint. Very dangerous suspect you get after. Extremely. The car has been spotted heading into the notorious Kwamashu settlement. 20 miles north of Durban, it is one of the largest townships in South Africa. It's home to many of the carjackers and armed robbers who operate in the city. The settlement is divided into the sections, and the car Dina is after is now heading into the most notorious. A section. Okay, we're very cautious on coming to this road here yeah, because uh, they could be parked anyway. Yeah. Before heading in, Dina and his partner R1, who cannot be identified, get ready for what they might face. There's a strong chance they will be fired upon. So these guys are quite clearly uh, not afraid of shooting at cops. Not, not afraid. They shot at the police already. As they head deeper into A section, more news of the crime reaches them. Rob, policeman, Rob, he's fired up. Silver's pistol on duty. Where you pick him up? And they escaped. They hijacked another vehicle outside the station. And they fled. We are shooting this keep down. And just keep down. down on the seat. Yeah. The seat will like this cover. 
as this lone police car explores one of the most dangerous places in South Africa, R1 spots something. No, check something quickly. The suspicious car that R1 spots isn't the one they're after, so the search continues. Not the same one. Same one. Not the same one. Still up. Still up. Still up. Then just around the corner, they see the one they're after. Copy the radio. Copy the radio. Let's go, Charlie. One nine. Yeah, break Oscar Charlie 1 9. Yeah, control Oscar Charlie 1 9. Confirm registration. Having located the stolen car, the armed criminals could be dangerously close. To avoid a firefight, they move out of the area to a safer location where they can regroup. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna withdraw from here now, right? Yeah. We're gonna withdraw out of the vicinity. It's like a red red area. Your police you can't go into the area because of the how volatile it is. And the risk we took in getting there without an armored vehicle is dangerous. That is why we didn't spend too long in there. We came out as fast as possible from it. You are more than likely to pick up contact faster than anywhere in this country. That's like the most dangerous area in this country. Not all crime involves violence against persons. As in the rest of the world, cash machines are a target for criminals in South Africa. Containing up to £10,000, twice the average annual wage, cash machines can be a lucrative money earner. But subtle methods of stealing data and filming PIN number entry have been rejected in favour of a less sophisticated approach. ATM bombings are one of South Africa's most fashionable crimes. There were 54 incidents in 2006. The following year, the figure had risen to 387. Heavily armed men in groups of four or five usually approach secluded ATMs in the early hours of the morning. They plant the explosives and hope that they hit the right spot. They actually took dynamite sticks, they exploded the whole thing. They took the money, I don't know how much money is the ATM take, about 100,000 rand an ATM. And, um, no, that's how they do it, eh? They, they don't care. And then they all withdraw. The last guy, guys that withdraw is the guys with AKs and stuff. Then you get a call as a policeman, you go straight there and you drive into them and they ambush you from all around the sides. They're just, they're actually cowards, eh? Cash in transit robberies are also an increase. They have more than doubled in the last seven years and often result in the death of security guards and innocent bystanders. You know why it is? Because of all these movies, eh? Because that movie Heat, where they rammed it, you know the Heat, when they rammed that thing, Robert De Niro? Then the movie came out, then suddenly it started, eh? Cats and transit, boof. That's how they do it. You see something in the movie, try it. And the more traditional kind of raids are still thriving in South Africa with robberies of businesses up 50% in one year. It's Friday evening in central Durban. Detective Dina Govenda of the organised crime unit knows it will be a busy night for the cops. Today is Friday. Normally, Durban Central area are very, extremely busy and uh, expected lots of crime should be committed. As some guys will be under the influence of alcohol and 
committing crimes, from petty crimes to serious crimes. It's not long before there's a report of a serious incident. An armed robbery is in progress at a downtown department store. Dina and Inspector Scuba Ready head to the location. They are looking for four suspects, two of whom are armed. Ready. Dina heads into the store where the robbery took place. Open, open. Push up. Head back, head back. Ready, ready. Right. But the suspects have already fled to a different store. Well, what? Well, what? Go inside, go inside, go in the car. In the car. They race two blocks down the busy street to the shop where the gunmen have been spotted. Suspects is apprehended. Put him up, put him up, put him up, put him inside, 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 put What's happening here is there's two suspects arrested so far. One of the firearm, the pull-arm robbery. They ran initially into Ackermans and now they've gone into Woolworths. They jumped onto the ceiling and one guy's still on at large. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's armed, he's dangerous. Are you going to go get him? Yes, we're going to get him. The cops cover all the exits of the store. <laughs> With one armed robber still at large, Dina heads around the back, where he thinks the gunman will be flushed out. We're just trying to see exactly where they're going to come out from. Dina spots something at one of the exits and quickly moves in. We're just waiting for the guy, Alex. Alex wants it. It's dangerous, it's dangerous. Too dangerous for the crew to get any closer. Oh. After 
after a 20 minute chase, the armed robber was cornered. The guy shot himself. The policeman injured, he fell from the second floor. The guy ran down and he went to the corner and he shot himself dead. He saw his gun found there. He realized there's too many policemen around and, and there was nowhere to go. And uh, he didn't want to surrender, so he shot himself. This kind of incident is nothing unusual. An armed robbery in a busy part of town, which ended up with one man dead. Here, it's hardly even news. But then you see how many policemen get killed and stuff. It's not worth it, huh? Eh? You think twice now because I've got a little son, two years, three months. You think twice now, actually, just to go into something, eh? Like when you're younger, you don't care. Hmm? Every single day, you have to worry about him and all that. Despite nearly 20 years on the force, Andre Stein is still no closer to understanding the extreme nature of crime in his country. Yes, I feel sorry for those who okay, haven't got food and, and maybe steal bread or, you know, steal to, to, to means. But these are higher. Why do you have to hijack, shoot dead the person in the vehicle for what? An innocent person who's got family, a mom or a dad or, or children. I mean, why do you have to shoot him dead? With a cash and transit, why do you have to burn the guards in the cash in the cash van? Why do you have to do that? You know, ATM bombing, the police come and investigate, doing his job, and shot the policeman in the head. Why do you have to do that? So I've got no sympathy for them, really. Yeah. If we get into the gunshot, I'll rather fight my way out of it, and then as long as six, seven is dead, I'll be happy, because that's the way they want to be, and that's the way they don't care. They don't give a hell. Hmm? So then we don't care. <laughs> That's how it goes, you know. <laughs>